Yesterday we worked on this card and we discovered that we have a short on one of the 12 volt lines. We have three of them here, three connectors, and we had a short here. We injected voltage at the coil and we monitored the board under a thermal camera and it turns out that we have a bad DR MOS here, the last one. We replaced it and we got rid of the short. But after we tested the board, we ended up with six beeps, which means that we still have a problem with the board. We inspected uh, a lot of the voltage rails and we found out that we have a dead short, a zero ohm reading on memory. A lot of you suggested that we inject voltage on memory to see if one of the chips here are at fault and if we can possibly still fix this card. So that's what we're going to do today. From experience, anytime I work on a video card where we have a dead short or a zero ohm reading on memory, it always ends up being a no fix. I have spent countless hours working on different video cards, different brands, different models, and there are a lot of models in the market. Like this one here, the Trio, I have not worked on this video card before. I do not claim that I'm an expert in fixing video cards, but it's a learning in progress thing. Some people in the comments also wrote, the card is not working because we do not have a fan or heat sink connected. That's absolutely nonsense. We should still be able to test the card without a fan or heat sink. The card will turn on for a good 15-20 seconds. It's going to overheat and then it will go into protection mode and we won't see anything on the screen. But the first 10-15 seconds, we should be able to see something on the screen. We do not have to have a fan connected and we do not have to have a heat sink connected in order to test the board. And aside from that, we are getting a dead short on memory. So it doesn't matter. Connecting a fan is not going to bring, is not going to remove the dead short. Connecting a heat sink will not get rid of the short. We have a dead short on memory. So that's the problem. Just a little bit of common sense goes a long way. But some people just write before they think. I do not mind what you type in the comments, but you will confuse others. You may be typing a comment about repairing a 3090 and you never seen a 3090 in your life. Oh, it looks like you have a missing component on the board. And the person is looking at this one here, missing component. Oh, and you have two more missing components here. Oh, and you have one more missing component here. And others who have no experience or never done this before, they will get confused. They will think, yeah, he's right. And then they will type also the same comment. Oh, I think you have three missing components here. And other viewers will read what those two viewers wrote and they will copy and write the same. Copy and write the same, copy and write the same. And by the end of the day, you will have 1,000 comments about three, four missing components here. Sometimes when I see a comment like this, I delete it so it doesn't confuse others. We're going to inject voltage right over here. I'm going to position the board vertically. And I'll lean it over to the microscope. Just like that. We're going to point the thermal camera at the board and see what gets hot. One, two, and three. We have a one point, we have a two amp draw. Okay, so I'm seeing something. See, when I inject voltage, I see heat on this chip and on this one. Look closely. And I've done this many times before. I desoldered the chip, we still have a short. I desoldered the second chip, we still have a short. I desoldered the third chip, we still have a short. Right now, I'm doing this video just for the sake of answering your comments. So you can see where I'm coming from. And we do not have any heat on the top ICs or on the left ones. Let's do this one more time. Yeah, so it's only here. The second, the third, and a little bit on the fourth. Let's start by desoldering the second chip and see what happens. All right, so we're going to apply heat. And it's a big chip. We're going to have to apply a lot of heat. I have my hot air station at max, air speed at max. Okay, 
So the chip is out. And now we're gonna measure to see if we still have a short. Do we still have a short? Now the chip that we just removed is the one with the most heat on it when we inject voltage. And are we gonna get lucky with this card where we fix the short by removing this chip? Let's see. And we still have a short. We still have it that short. And if we go to resistance mode, and we measure here, zero ohm reading at that short, zero ohm reading. Right now, if we inject voltage again, we're gonna see that the second one is gonna get hot, and then the third one, and then the fourth one, and so on and so forth. So I learned not to spend a lot of time when we have it that short on memory. Back to the thermal camera. Now, if we inject voltage again, you see we have chip number three is getting hot and a little bit of chip number four. And also a little bit on this one. So let's go ahead and desolder chip number three and see what happens. Okay, so chip number two is out. And since the chip is protected from under, I slipped this blade under. And now we have the chips out. Let's inject voltage. Actually not inject voltage, we're gonna measure in diode mode. Do we still have a short? And we do. Should I keep going? And now what happens if we inject voltage again? Now chip number four and this one are getting hot. We're going to keep going over this, chip by chip, and we're still going to have a short. One more time. See? Let's go over chip number three. I do not want to leave you hanging, so let's do chip number three, or chip number four. All right. And let's see, do we still have a short? Meter in diet mode, memory, and we still have a short. Should I keep going? And now we have three chips out, and if we inject voltage again, we're gonna get a heat spot at the other chip, so on and so forth. We're gonna go through all the chips, and we're still gonna have a short. The reason I know this, because I've done it before. Why don't we desolder this coil and see if the shot is coming from the right or left? Apply some flux. I do not want to apply any hot air on the coil because we have aluminum capacitor right to the left of the coil and we also have one on the right. So we're going to apply low melt solder and remove this inductor safely. Okay, and I think we may need a bigger tip because the inductor is big and a small tip cannot transfer a lot of heat. I always mention it. If you are working with big components, you need a bigger tip. The area is tight. This cap is very close to the inductor, but it looks far because we are under a microscope. And look at my soldering iron, it can barely fit.
All right, so now that we applied low mount solder, we can use a little bit of heat to desolder this connector or this inductor, not connector. Yeah, and just apply a little bit of heat. And out. If it wasn't for low melt solder, it would take a tremendous amount of heat to desolder this inductor because the board is thick and the board will absorb all the heat until the board itself reaches the melting temperature of solder. And that's when we will be able to remove that inductor. So now that the inductor is out, let's measure. Do we have a short on the right or to the left of the inductor? If the short is coming from the left side of the inductor, it means we have a problem right here. Meter in continuity mode. And you see, that's the GPU side. Let's put the inductor back. And we're going to call it off for this card. I could have done the inductor test from the beginning, but I just wanted to show you that none of the actual chips are the problem. And I came to that conclusion after working on so many video cards where I desoldered all the RAM chips and we still had a short. Right, and the soldering is done. Right now it's not going to do us any good cleaning that inductor, but still. All right, so that's it. We're going to call it off for this video card. I just wanted to go over this video to clear some misconceptions that the card may still be savable. I just wanted to show you that anytime we have a zero ohm or that short on memory, it's very likely that the video card is dead. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.